Luke chapter 16. And he said also unto his disciples. Turn to the disciples now. See, when you read the scriptures, you've got to find out who is being addressed. Now he's talking to his disciples. They're not washed in the blood yet. They're going by works. You know what their salvation is? They've been following Jesus for three years now. Three and a half years. They've been doing everything that he's told them to do. That's salvation for them. He just told the, the Pharisees, you got to take care of the poor, main, blind, and all that to be saved. And they outright rejected it. There was a certain rich man. That seems to be the word of Luke. Which had a steward. Now, I don't really understand this, but we'll read it. And the same was accused unto him that had that he had wasted his goods. The steward was taking the, the certain rich man, taking his goods and just wasting. Wasting time, wasting energy, wasting money. Waste. God never wastes. America wastes. Her dumpsters are full of food. And then she talks about feeding the nation. God will hold you accountable for everything you wasted, especially time. And he would be the, the rich man called him the servant and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Now notice the rich man, he gets an account, he hears something about somebody. And he doesn't go through the grapevine. He doesn't go to the women. He doesn't go to... The peep, he goes right to the person involved and gets in his face and says, Hey, I heard this about you. Give an account of thy stewardship. Now, the steward was right. Okay, here. You go, sir. I have nothing to fear. If I made mistakes, they're probably in there. But other than that, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Well, the words that he heard, he's already passed a judgment upon him. Unless the account of the stewardship given to him couldn't be proved. He's fired. He is no longer the steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? Too late. A lot of people, after the consequences, oh, what shall I do? Lord, help me now. Well. Should have thought of that before. For my Lord taken away from me the stewardship. He's fired. Thou mayest no longer be steward. He has taken away my stewardship. The guy is fired. I cannot dig manual labor. Why? I don't know. To beg, I am ashamed. Well, there's only two options for this gentleman. I mean, there's nothing else he could have done. There's no other work he could have done. You know why he couldn't do nothing? You know why he has to go into the into the, the sides of the highway and lean against, I mean, work a shovel? You know why he would have to beg? Why he can't get a, a job in a grocery store or market? Why he can't get a job in a shop somewhere? Why he can't watch someone's sheep as a hiring? He got fired for being a steward. And a lot of these people today, you know, they do a crime. And then they're shocked why no one trusts me. Well, you should have thought, thought of that. People get caught stealing into the company. And then they wonder why when they do their jail time, oh, I can't get a job. I've done my time. Yeah, but there's something here called character. For me... Listen, we all lie, I lie. But if you continue in lies, I will not listen to you. I have no trust in you. Now, we all lie. Put us on the spot. We're going to be prone to lie. That's in our nature. This guy stole. Now, and I can't say that today. because Today's generation is just totally weird. 
But let's say my generation growing up. Let's say my dad's generation or my grandpa's generation. If this guy were to go walk and say, hey, you know, I need a job. Can I, can I do roofs with you? Can I paint houses with you, with my grandpa? Well, one of the things my grandpa's going to look at, well, what jobs have you had? Why are you no longer looking at those jobs? Well, I used to be a steward. Why aren't you a steward? Hey, steward, wow, that's that's an easy job. Why aren't you a steward? It was, oh, I was, I wasted, I stole. You ain't going to get a job. So this guy has to get a job to dig. You know one of those jobs in the Bible speaks about digging? No. Well, yeah, graves. How about dung? That's one of the things, shoveling dung. I am resolved what to do. I am resolved no longer to linger. That when I am put out of stewardship, he's already fired. He hasn't packed his bags, got his boxes, desk stuff yet. They may receive me into their houses. Who? He has no he has nowhere to go now. Even amongst a Jewish family a thief? You ain't coming in our house. Who would want this guy to live in their house with him? I know somebody just had a thing. He had a roommate, and while he went to work, his roommate took everything, including the important papers. Well, you gonna if you find out that that guy did those kind, of, would you have him as your roommate? No. See what you got to realize. There's one thing on this unjust steward is you got to realize he has ruined not only his reputation, but he has ruined his character. He will have to do much more to retain that characteristic than he has done with his wasting. He has to go above and beyond credibility. And even still, he will have the shadow of this wasting of losing his job that will tie to him forever. And people, once you're in prison, you've got the mark. You got to think about that before you go to prison. Once you go into prison, that's it. So they, so he called every one of, his, of the Lord's debtors unto him. Now I would assume they would be maybe these debtors. Maybe try to get in nice with them. So he called every one of the Lord's debtors. These are people who owe money. He said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? He ain't your Lord no more. Especially in the Old Testament sense. After what we just read in, in, in Ezekiel today as a family, you're not saved. Old Testament. You have stepped out of the ways of right and you're going to hell. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I did mean to say that. And say to how much owest thou unto my Lord? Now, I read a lot of things into this, and maybe I shouldn't manage to just make it simple. Did the rich man know he was doing this? I have a lot of questions about what this guy does. I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. He said, a hundred measures of oil. He said unto him, Take thy bill, sit down quickly, and write fifty. The rich man lost half of his oil. Okay. Unless it's a commission. Part of it is a commission to this servant. I don't, so like I said, I don't understand. I'm throwing stuff out there. Yeah, maybe he's taking his payment part out of the bill. That's part of it. 50% of the oil is his commission. That's a lot. Well, if he's swindling people. Yeah. So see what I mean? It, you can read so charge, much. He might have charged them double. And that's what yep. the Lord found out. Well, see, there's so much you can read into it. Then said he to another, not just once, but twice. 
And how much owest thou? And he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. That's eighty. So this is twenty off. And the Lord commended the unjust steward. I don't know why. To me, the Lord lost money unless that's a commission. Because he had done wisely. I don't understand what's wise. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. I think, like I said, I think the Lord found out he was overcharging these people. Yep. But the children of this generation are, are wiser than the children of light. John 12, 38, Ephesians 5, 8. And I have a question mark by this. I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitation. I have no idea what to do with that verse. Unrighteousness, the mammon, make to yourselves friends of mammon of unrighteousness. I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to move on to verse 10. I've heard several preachers go through this chapter. I wanted to, this chapter was just over, right over passed by. Went right to verse 19. It's like, oh, good, here we go. And it was skipped. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. I can understand that one. It, listen, if God is giving you one talent, and you take that talent and you take it to the world, let's say you can sing. You come out of a Baptist church and now you're the top of the charts. Top 10. Casey Kasem. This singer and her lovely, lovely, worldly music. God ain't going to give you nothing else for him. You taking something that he's given you to praise the Lord Jesus Christ and you giving it to the world. Why would you end up that person such a terrible death? Because you had no life. You lived in the world. He that is unjust in the least shall be unjust with much. When God gives to you, little is much, doesn't the Bible say? God has given us at least one talent. I don't care if you're blind. I don't care if you're deaf. I don't care if you're lame. I don't care. You can pray. You receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. There's anything you cannot ever do. If you are in a convalescent home, in a hospital bed, with your senses gone... You can pray. And I've done the nursing home ministry. And when you go there and say, Brother, we pray for you all week. And then you look back, wow, okay, that's how that week went by quick. That's how that week. So that's all you can do. You did your favor. You've done your one talent. You're in prison. I've been in the prison ministry. You can go tell people who I will never meet about Jesus Christ. You can sit down and read a Bible to them. Are you faithful in just what God's giving? You be faithful in that, he'll move you. One day I started a prison ministry. Well, I, I, was, I was already there, but the Lord opened the door for me. One time I said, you know what? I'm just going to hold a sign for Jesus Christ. I'm going to take my children. We're going to go hold a sign for Jesus Christ. I'm going to open up my big fat mouth and preach on the street for Jesus Christ. And you realize what God said, listen, that mouth, I've given you a great harsh voice that people complain about you use it for me and when i go on the computer and look to where all these messages i am all over the world god gave me a little thing and i gave it to him and now it's worldwide i pray to be a pastor i'm in a position greater than a pastor because i've not only become an evangelist but i've become a missionary thanks to the internet and all I had to do is open my big... Listen, I could have opened up my big mouth and became one of these radio personalities. I could have been one of these talk show hosts. I could have been one of the comedians. 
I could have done whatever I could have done with my mouth. I could have used it for my own glory and to get fame. But I used it for God. And you know what? I'll give him more. I'll give him more. How on earth that... I don't even know how it started. Let's go down to this farmer's market and let's pass out gospel tracts. Oh, no, that didn't work. All right, let's stand in the street corner and start preaching to them. And we've been doing that year after year after year, except for sickness and weather. And we got people who know us. We got people who like us. We got people who hate us. But we got people who have heard the gospel. Who knows what the Lord will do tomorrow? Who knows what the Lord will do next month? Who knows what the Lord will do next year if I keep on doing? But that moment when I take what I am faithful in for God and I turn it into unfaithfulness or waste, then I'm bound for a fall and lose my stewardship. I am a steward right now of the word of God. I need to be faithful to it. I need not to waste it. Whatever God has given you, a steward, voice, singing, instrument, whatever it is, be faithful and do not waste it. Like this servant. If therefore ye have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, all right, God has given you a good job, good pay, good, good paycheck every week. And you blow it on the horses. You blow it on beer. You blow it on worms. Okay? Dog food. Who will, uh, who will commit to your trust in true riches? Why can't I win the big lottery? Because you keep blowing your money on the little lotteries. Guy yesterday scratching all tickets. I said, I said well, I looked at the guy and said, you pay three bucks for that. I said, why don't you just give me the three bucks? That way it will be no loss. How come I didn't win the money? Well, how much you've spent to buy those stupid tickets? I've been there. If what you take with what God has given you today and you waste it, this is all about this unjust steward. If you waste what God's given you, he ain't going to give you no more. If he gives you an old broken down car that you will not take care of, He's not going to give you a brand new car. If you can't take care of the pet cat or the pet dog that you got, he ain't going to trust you with a family. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Oh, I like to have my own business. And yet you spend all the time at the water cooler. You're fooling around. You're wasting your employer. Just like this unsteward steward. This unjust steward is never going to get into the, the rich man's status and have his own stewards. No servant can serve two masters. Uh-oh. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. And this verse did not go further. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't have the world and have God all in one shoe. You got to have two shoes. And you got to choose. Is it going to be God or is it going to be man? We spoke about this the other night. The, the tape was shut off because of a cord. You guys say right now, am I going to go the God route with Jesus Christ, suffer persecution, or am I just going to go the CEO route and get worldly suffrage? And you're going to suffer no matter what. But you climb the ladder of God, you'll get crowns and rewards. You, you climb the ladder of CEO, you're going to die. You're going to end up like the rich man. You're going to have nothing but an empty storage center where people will just love to be at your will. And yet, if you serve God, he knows your needs and he will provide your needs, not your wants. And if you serve God right, if God says that you have a need for a car, he'll provide you a car. It won't be a Cadillac or whatever car they, Lexus, I think, today, the car they want. Okay? If you need a place to live, well, God will provide that need for living. It may not be a penthouse. 
You may not eat steak or pork every day. Food is a need. When you come to that, you need to study the life of Paul. God provided all his needs. The Pharisee also, who were covetous, heard all these things. They derided, laughed, ridiculed him. He was talking to the disciples. And the Pharisees butted in. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Guess what they love? The love of money. And he said unto him, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For they, for that which is highly esteemed among men, diplomas, riches, he with the most toys, he with the most goods, all the supermarkets, all the money, all the whatever. Among men is abomination in sight of God. Look at this great big church I have and all the people that are in it. God says that's an abomination. Somewhere out in the middle of Africa, somewhere they're meeting in amongst the trees, maybe with a tin or a plastic roof. Just trying to keep the bugs away and they're serving God with all love and all care, with all heart, with all mind and all soul. And God says, I am pleased with that. Little is much when God is there. The law and the prophets were unto John. So what is John to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? What are you in? Who knows? Because he's telling him, a leper comes to him, go show yourself to the priest. He's going to temple service. He's going on the Sabbath. He's doing the law. And yet, you, uh, you never read in the Gospels, anybody that dies are resurrected. No one dies around Jesus. What is the dispensation that Jesus is in if the law and prophets were into John? Put a big question mark. Because it is the law and prophets. And it's Jesus Christ. What if that leper man that, that got the leprosy gone, what if he did not do what Jesus said and didn't go to the priest? Embarrassed or just, ah, I'm okay now. What would have happened to him? He disobeyed the law and he disobeyed the word of Jesus, which is the word of God, right? He, he, well, he definitely would die and go to hell at least. You see, if you don't make Jesus God, then his word has none effect. But even the devils are saying, hey, man, don't persecute us now. You're going to, but not now. Since the time the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into, everybody wants to go in the kingdom of God. Even the Pharisees. But they just don't want to do the Jesus word group. We got our own way, thank you very much. And when we set up that kingdom, we're going to be in charge, not God. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. And Jesus will fulfill all prophecy. Whosoever putteth away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. Right in the middle of two things. Pharisees must have had a little problem with divorce. There was a certain, there's that word again. 16 started off with a certain rich man. In the middle of this chapter, a certain rich man with clothes in purple and fine linen and fair sumptuously. Every, this guy is rich. He had the clothes of being rich. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus. This is definitely not a parable. Which was laid at his gate, the rich man's gate, full of swords. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs 
which fell from the rich man's table, laid at the gate in the rich man's table, he's, he's the garbage cans. Or the way they did things back then was, you know, they just throw it out the window and wash it down the, the driveway or the walkway. More of the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, you can't read that as lasting. You know what these dogs were doing? They were cleaning the garbage that the rich man was throwing out in the streets. They were savages. There's another word I'm trying to think. I can't think of the word. The dogs were left to clean the streets of all the bones, all the, the junk that you threw out. Meanwhile, while these dogs are fighting with the with the beggar to get food, the dogs are eating the beggar's food. The, the beggar's trying to eat the dog's food. They are licking his sores. Dogs are unclean to Jewish people. These scavengers out for themselves being dogs that they are dog eat dog trying to take this man's food or having more compassion on him than a rich man that unclean filthy dog have you ever seen what dogs do is at least they're licking this man's sores while they're trying to fight for that crumb And dogs will do this in major cities throughout America. They'll live in alleyways and pick garbage with the alley cats. And they're probably homeless people who have to fight the dogs and the alley cats to get some food. I guarantee that happens. It's happening now. It will happen tonight. It will happen tomorrow as long as the Lord tarries. There is a beggar and animals fighting for food in the dumpster. And no one cares about either or. And that beggar may has, you know, he's not Jewish. He doesn't have an idea what the Bible. Maybe he made some of these dogs his friend. Maybe he'll take some something he finds and feed the dog from it. But in the Jewish times, these dogs are unclean, and yet they're giving Lazarus a lick in the face, a lick on the sore. Even the Samaritan took care of the wounds of the guy that was among thieves. The priest and the Levite just walked away. That half-breed Samaritan did what he should have done. Everything that he could have done for that man. And here's his dead dog. What they call Jesus. This is what Jesus called a Gentile woman. A dog. You remember, you remember what that illustration was, Lord? The table. Read this verse 21 with little compassion that, that was not shown to Lazarus and to realize he is with the unclean animals as that son that left his dad and went with the swine. And the swine wouldn't even probably give up any of that food to the guy. He has to fight the swine to get the food. This guy's probably fighting the dogs while they're licking him. Well, he fed the swine, so he could go through the buckets before they went to the swine. Yeah. But the, if the master was hard, yeah. master could have had people watching him. Because he said, "Long to eat the husk, the little grass and grains and leaves and the husk." And it came to pass that the beggar died. Who cares? Realize, if you were to walk in a graveyard today, just walk in. And most likely, you come to the first gravestone, you look at who cares? There's nobody you know. There's nobody you care about. You have no idea who that person is. You don't care. The beggar died. And was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. How do you know that's not today? How can you... Truthfully, honestly say that angels don't carry us to God. What did Paul say? 
When we die, what happens when we die? We're absent from the body and present with the Lord. We don't look for angels. We have a microscopic second of passing from this earth to before God, Jesus Christ. No angels come for us. That moment that we take that last breath, there's Jesus Christ. Can you imagine what that's like? Can you just even imagine? You are stepping out of that sinful flesh into glory, your soul. Lazarus didn't go to heaven. He went to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died. Who cares? And was buried. He was Jehovah Witness and in hell. There's a difference between the grave and hell. They buried the body and in hell. You don't dig a hole in a graveyard and see flames shooting out. But they don't believe hell is flames anyway. It's, it's just the state of death. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. You have eyeballs in hell. Without tears. Because he's going to ask for a drop of water. He could at least got it from one of his tears. You will, uh, no pun or anything like that, you will have dry eyes in hell. Ever get a dry, itchy eye? Isn't that irritating? You'll get that in hell. No Visine or any eye drops. Being in torments, plural. I'm going to break this, I'm going to break this section down with the time we got. So you're not just torments, you're torments. Seeth Abraham afar off, so you see with your eyes. He knows who Abraham is. He knows who Lazarus is. He knows that rabbi that's across the way. He knows people in hell. And Lazarus in his bosom. He had, he knew who Lazarus was. Don't say when Lazarus sat at the gate that he had no idea who Lazarus was. He knew who Lazarus was. He cried. You speak in hell. And your tone, your words have different... At, uh, what? He will speak. He will cry. Volumes. I can't think of another word. He said, Father Abraham, he's a Jewish man. A Jewish man is in hell claiming Abraham is his father. Who you are, what you are of, will not get you into heaven or the land. Have mercy on me. A man in hell wants mercy. And yet he never showed any mercy in his lifetime. Be, be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap, even in hell. I don't know how many years Lazarus laid at his gate, but this guy is going to get no mercy for all eternity. That's a crop. That's a seed that produced many other seeds and fruits. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger. Lazarus has a finger in water. The rich man, I'm going to put it to today. Let me jump ahead in the future. The rich man in hell remembers a bottle of water. He remembers he can go in the store or the convenience store and get himself a bottle of water. 
but the tip of his finger and cool my tongue. He has a tongue. For I, he still has that personal pronoun, I, me, myself. In hell, you don't forget about me, myself, and I. That doesn't go away. Hell will not cure that. In this flame, how do you escape that one? In hell, there's a flame. Jesus never preached about hell. Really? He just told you about hell fire in three verses. Hell is the gray. Really? Let's go dig one up right now. Show me the damn flame. I can say damn with that word. Come on. You want me to be one of you people? You show me that flame coming out of that grave. And I'll show you a liar by Luke 16 that you are. So there is a flame. This flame in hell. Hell fire is not figurative, is not kind of preaching. It is exactly what's going on right now. But Abraham said, Abraham can speak. Son, that rich man is a Jew. Abraham acknowledged it, the rich man acknowledged it, and they're in two different places after death. Remember, you can remember in hell. You know, it's much better in heaven than it is hell. My wife had breast cancer. And had surgeries and pain and suffering. They will never remember that in glory. Never. Here's a guy in hell who's going to remember a lot of things that we won't. That thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. And likewise Lazarus evil things. Abraham knew the condition of the rich man and knew the condition of Lazarus. In the grave, in the center of the earth. But now he is comforted on the side of the Lord. He's not in heaven yet. Jesus has not died, buried, and rose from the grave. But he's comforted. And thou art tormented. Not torments only. Tormented. Past tense. Abraham could see that. <coughs> The rich man says, I'm in torments. And Abraham says, you're tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there's more people with Abraham. There's a great gulf fixed. The Romans would call that sticks. I forgot what the name of that bony creature with his boat would supposedly cross the two. But this gulf that Abraham speaks about is the same gulf that Jesus walks on. From hell to Abraham's bosom to see that thief that day. You think it was bad enough that Jesus walked on water? He walked on a fiery gulf. He crossed that gulf that no man would ever cross. That gulf is not purgatory because Abraham said there's no one there and we can't go between the two. So that day which would pass from hence to you, everybody on my side, cannot come to you. Neither can they pass to us. Anybody on your side can't come to us. Abraham ruled out purgatory. If you're over there, you can't come here. If you're here, you can't go there. That would come from thence. Look at the great lessons that 
occults will mess with, that you're dealing with. Then he said, this is the rich man. I pray. Too late. You pray in hell. You know, Judas prayed wrong. He went to the priest and prayed. I pray, therefore, Father, that thou would Father, religion, that thou would send him, Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brethren. He remembers his five brethren. The rich man in hell, or anybody in hell, now wants a missionary. There are people in hell today crying out to Christians, go ye in all the world, especially my house, and preach the gospel. I've got lost family in a grave right now saying, you did a good job. Keep doing it. I've got grandchildren. I've got sons. I've got daughters. Your cousins. Whatever they Keep doing it. Keep doing it. I got five brethren that he made testify unto them. Least they also come into this place of torment. Torment. Torments. Tormented. Place of torment. You know what a man in hell does not want today? He doesn't want to see you, his loved one, there. He prays that someone will send to his family the gospel. Abraham said unto him that they have Moses and the prophet, the Old Testament. Let them hear them. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, not television. Not an ark being built somewhere. He said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, resurrection. He believes in a resurrection. They will repent. He believes now in repentance. You know what he said? He said, send Lazarus to my family that they may say a prayer. No! He says, send Lazarus to my family that they may repent. The only place not to come here, the only way to get out of this place is that they repent. A man in hell said, you need to repent and not come here. Most of your modern churches don't even believe a man in hell today. They don't even believe in hell. They don't. It passes off as a parable. And a man in hell says that you need to repent. Don't give them a prayer. Also, just notice something else. Moses and the prophets. Were Moses and the prophets written when Abraham was alive? No. Moses came much later than Abraham. Uh, that's a little note I just wanted to add there. I should have added it at the end. And he said to them, they, if they hear not Moses and the prophet. Now let's get this. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. If they will not hear Moses' prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one was rose from the dead. So if we give you peanut butter, we give you popcorn, we give you games, we give you prizes, we give you movies, we give you entertainment, you can't be saved. According to Abraham and according to the rich man that's burning in hell, you've got to repent. Don't put no pony trick shows in there. Don't give us a resurrection of the dead. We've seen this vision. I've seen this tunnel at the end of it. You've got to give them the W O 
R D S. If you ain't got the words, you didn't repent, you're not saved. You say you're getting a little excited. I am excited. Because I've dealt with many people who thought they're saved and they just said a prayer. I had a man tell me once, well, my preacher said a prayer for me and I couldn't do nothing with it. If you can't believe a man that's in hell, you ain't going to believe nothing. Well, I don't believe it so. Well, Jesus told us, if you got a red-lettered Bible, this whole thing is red-lettered. If you're not going to believe what Jesus said, forget it. You got an eyewitness of somebody in hell by God who created hell and put this man in hell. You got Jesus' testimony of what he said. A conversation that went on in hell, Jesus recorded it for you. And that man in hell said there's only one way to be saved. <laughs> you got to repent. And Jesus had not died yet, he had not been buried, and he had not risen from the dead. And the word still is repent. There are going to be people at the great white throne judgment going to be cast in there. Lord, didn't we do this? Lord, didn't we say this prayer? And Jesus is going to say, you lacked repentance. I'll deal with that man. I'll deal with that preacher. I'll deal with that message. I'll deal with that evangelist. I'll deal with that missionary later. But you didn't repent. Be careful of a Bible that looks like Swiss cheese. Words cut it out. Watered down. 